Britain's borders are protected by 25,000 men and women. At home and abroad, their job is to seek out the lawbreakers and imposters who don't have a right to be here. They are the UK Border Force. Tonight, the couple who didn't exist. I've lied all the time and I don't want to, you know, to yeah, carry this burden yeah. of lying all the time. An illegal worker is caught on camera. Red t-shirt? Gentlemen working with red t-shirt, that's you. Serving, serving a customer. And a student is given a lecture at Heathrow. You've got documents by deception. How you got them, I don't know. All right, so stop messing about because this is ridiculous. Rising immigration in rural Britain has brought an increase in illegal workers. In Wales, enforcement teams search the valleys for immigration offenders. Today, Officer Whitmarsh Knight is en route to a Chinese takeaway suspected of employing illegal workers. Am I going to have any runners out the back? And then hopefully, when we get in there, there'll be some people we can actually remove out of it. As two of the team enter from the front, Officer Whitmarsh Knight covers the rear. Up here we go. Hey! They're trying to run! They're trying to run! They're, they're trying to run! Right. Oh. Two men are stopped, trying to escape out of the back. Can you turn all off, please, for me? Turn around there. And there are more in the kitchen. Along with the boss, five people are found on the premises. Do you speak English? No. Do you speak English? No. Oh, don't speak any English, they say. As Officer Whitmarsh Knight questions one of the runners using an interpreter on the phone, Officer Collins goes upstairs. Hello. Just you in here, is it, mate? Is anyone else up here? Adult? Mum? Dad? Mum, Mum, Dad? Yeah? Dad. Downstairs. <laughs> OK. Hi, we've got two up here, two children. While two young children have been found upstairs, Officer Whitmarsh Knight has found out why this man was so keen to get away. He's claiming that he arrived here illegally in 2003, that he came to Sunny Risker for fun, and he's only been here a couple of days. But he's registered with a dentist. Oh, there we are, registered with a dentist, which you do when you're on holiday. He admits entering Britain illegally. He is now arrested. As officers search for documents relating to the man they just arrested, they find an asylum registration card that belongs to the second man who tried to run. That's Immigration Nationality Application Registration Card. These cards are given to asylum seekers. They store fingerprints and state if they're allowed to work. But it actually says employment prohibited there, and even bigger at the back. It means that he's in the system. We have checked, and he is a, fa a failed asylum seeker. He's absconded. You? Working? Yeah? yeah. Is that downstairs? No. No? Busy boy, then. All his appeal rights are exhausted, and he has since disappeared off the screen. So we're looking to take him into the police station so we can get the travel document application up and running for him as well. Officer Nick Jupp interviews the father of the child found upstairs. Is it the two children upstairs, your children? No, one child. One child. Is that the boy or the girl? Jennifer. Jennifer, is it? OK. After you. He finds a passport that shows he's in Britain okay. legally via Ireland. Irish. Ireland has sort of different set of immigration rules. And sometimes uh, it is easier for um, foreign nationals to get Irish citizenship. If a child is born in Ireland, then it automatically qualifies for Irish citizenship. Yep. Then they're obviously allowed to stay in the UK as well because it's part of the European Union. So as far as I'm concerned, um, this family is fine. Two out of three employees 
are not allowed to work. But there is still one more to be interviewed. Officers will have to find out who she is and why she's here. Coming up, the extraordinary case of stolen identity. Well, I have no other identity than that, sorry. Who's Rajendra Naidu? Letters from her for you. Why was payslips here? And amnesia at Heathrow. You've forgotten where you've got your certificates from, haven't you? No, I don't yeah. in college. How do you get a certificate from a college you don't attend? The criminal investigations team at Croydon deal with serious immigration crime. Officer Tina Leonette investigates cases of identity fraud. Just over a year ago, UK border agency took a call from a woman in America. She said that she and her brother had been victims of identity theft by a man and woman living as a married couple in Britain. I'm just conscious. So basically we've got these two people who have stolen the identities of a brother and sister. They're pretending to be brother and sister for benefit claims, but they're actually, if not husband and wife, they're certainly partners. Today, Tina's team prepare to visit the couple's home address for the first time. It's a big day. Tina has been working on this case for six months, a case that also involves serious benefit fraud. So I've got an overpayment roughly about in excess of 100,000 pounds. Um, that's right, yeah. They've been claiming benefits since 2002. It will total over um, 100,000. The real person left the UK in 1984. She went to the States to get married, and she's not been back since. The woman they're looking for is suspected of stealing the identity of someone called Savitri Naidu. If she answers to this name, she'll be arrested. Living at the same address is the woman's partner, who uses the name Rajendra Naidu. According to Home Office records, his real name is Mark Singh. But what we're looking for is um, evidence of who these people really are, how long they've lived in the UK, um, what documents they've got. They've been here a long time, they must have, um, they've established a life. So we need to find out exactly what they've been doing and how. Hello, mate. Hello, sir. UK Border Agency. Can you come in and speak to you? Is that all right? Yeah. Can, can you quick come in, please? Thank you. What's your name, sir? Mr. Singh. Mr. Singh. Have you got a living room to come and speak to you, sir? Yeah. What's your first name, Mr. Singh? Hello, Mark Anthony. Mark Anthony. Do you want to have a seat, please? The man has identified himself as the target, Mark Singh. What's your name, madam, please? Nadu. Nadu. Okay. Savitri. And the woman says she is Savitri Nadu, but the team believes this name belongs to someone else. And what nationality are you? Well, Guyanese, well, British as well. Okay, the reason why we're here is that we have information that uh, you have possibly assumed the identity of somebody else and that uh, Savitri Nadu isn't your real identity, okay? Um, I'm therefore arresting you on suspicion of illegal entry, uh, obtaining a pecuniary advantage by deception, and obtaining property by deception. Okay. Do you understand why you're under arrest? I'm not sure. Okay, well, I'll just explain that we think you've taken the identity of somebody else. Well, I have no other identity than that, sorry. Okay, right, well, we, can, we need to talk to you about it at the police station, and you can therefore explain your version of events, all right? The woman is sticking to her story. Officers must now search for evidence to prove her real identity. It's a money order. She's obviously sent home. It's got this address with a different name on. It's got the name Kamali. Um, which is similar to the name that, that we thought she really was. That's um, possibly who she really is. So that's quite good evidence already. As the woman's story begins to unravel, Officer Burkham finds some pay slips that may relate to her partner. There's a pay slip here addressed to Mr. R.V. Naidu, so clearly he's been working at the hospital using that identity. Um, you know, sort of the sort of document you'd expect to find lying around the house of somebody who's, uh, who's using an identity. Is it Mr. Singh? Yeah. Who's Rajendra Naidu? He lives at... Um... London Road there. Um... So why do, you, why do you have all these documents in your house then? And I used to come here. 
Sorry? You used to be here also. He used to be here. Yeah, so why are his documents moved. all still here then? Let us come here for him. Why are his pay slips here? I have to say the truth, yeah. I have to tell you the truth. Let's go to the police station. I will tell you the truth. What happened? Okay. Yeah, yeah. But to be honest, somehow. You're using that name, aren't you? Yes, I am using. You it. are. Okay, fine. All right, sir. No problem. Uh, we found some documents um, addressed to uh, a guy called Rajendra Naidu, and um, Tina mentioned at the briefing that uh, he th we, that she thought it's an identity that uh, this gentleman has, has been using. So I just asked him about the documents, and he admitted that he is using them. So we think um, you know he's going to be arrested for those offences as well. The man confesses. He's been working at a hospital canteen for five years under a false name. All right, okay. And amongst the hall of documents, officers believe they've just found the woman's real passport. This is a good find. In these cases, it's always very hard to find out who the real person is. The passport says Kamini Sukram, uh, born 23rd of February 1964, Guyanese. Looks like she's been here since 1995 when she was given six months entry as a visitor and doesn't appear to have had a stay extended since then. So she's obviously assumed the, the ID we've arrested her under sometime after 1995. Kamini Sukram came to Britain on a six month visit visa from Guyana, South America. She's been here for 14 years using someone else's name. With this stolen identity, she's claimed just over £100,000 in state benefits and even managed to become a British citizen. She's kept quiet so far, but with a house full of documents revealing 14 years of deception, it's not long before the truth comes out. We're not here to tell lies, are we? It's just... You know, you tell the truth and that's it. Finish with. Yeah. I've lied all the time and I don't want to, oh, you know, to yeah, carry this burden yeah. of lying all the time. It is a relief to let the judge know the truth. And, and as I said, I want the truth to let the truth be known. Each year, Britain welcomes 200,000 foreign students who come here to study. Most are genuine. But some students use college documents to enter Britain even though they have no intention of studying. Today, Officer Lisa Lee has stopped a student who tells her he's coming back to Britain to continue his studies at a college in London. On arrival, he was very vague about what he studied, didn't know very much about his subject area, which is IT. What's a URL? What does HTTP stand for? He didn't have a clue. Um, now, clearly, he's been studying IT for almost three years. He should have a better idea of what's going on than that. He appears to know little about his course, and Officer Lee suspects he's not been studying at all. The passenger says he's a student at Churchill College in London. All right. Do you want to just grab your hand luggage and we'll go down and get your other bag? Okay. All right. A bag search gives a chance to find one, evidence that can back up suspicions about a passenger's reasons for coming to Britain. You studied a diploma in IT, yeah? But you don't know what URL is or HTTP? All right, you never mentioned this college to me before. No, you didn't. You've forgotten where you've got your certificates from, haven't you? No, London yeah. College. You didn't tell me about this college, sir. I specifically asked you and you didn't mention it. Officer Lee has found some college certificates from a different college to the one where he says he studies. You didn't tell me you went to the College of Professional and Management Studies. I told you before. You did not, sir. You said you were enrolled in October 2007 at this college. This says you were studying somewhere else at the time. I wrote it down. So how do you get a certificate from a college you don't attend? I wish my university had been like that. We're going back upstairs. And then I'm going to interview you properly. You're not going to talk to me now? No? Fair enough. If you don't want to answer my questions, we can send you back to India without answering my questions, OK? If you don't answer, we can refuse your entry. Failure to cooperate with an immigration officer, yeah? 
he had some documents with him, some certificates from a college he's not mentioned at all um, to me when, on arrival. I specifically went through his study history in the UK and he said he studied at one place for a year and then transferred to the college he claims to be studying at now. And he's got a totally different diploma from a different college that we've not come across before. So how did he get that? Officer Lee phones the college where the passenger says he's currently studying. Oh, hello, sir. It's Officer Lee from Immigration. What was his attendance at your college? Really? So why does he know nothing about his course then? So he was attending when? Right, from October 2007. No. All right then, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. The current college he claims to be at is maintaining he has a very high percentage of attendance. The college supports his story, but Officer Lee wants to know more about the certificates she found in his bag from a different college. OK, this college, the number is no longer in operation. So I will do a quick check online and see if I can get anything else for them. Well, it still has a website. OK, I've just checked the... Um, Department for Innovation University and Skills Register, which colleges have to be on if students are to be given their visas or extensions of stay. The college that he got this letter from is no longer on it, if indeed it ever was. Um, so the phone number's not working, the college is not on the register, but they do still have a website. But their latest news is actually from May 2007, so chances are it's closed down. So he's attending two colleges virtually the whole time to do the same course. Can't have been in two places at once. The passenger appears to have been studying at two colleges at the same time. Someone's not telling the truth. Officer Lee wants to find out what he's been up to since he was given a student visa three years ago. He's not a student here, I can just feel it. I just know from experience that he's not studying here, but it's, we, we have to have concrete evidence that we can use to overturn his visa. That's what I'm going to go and get. At a Chinese takeaway in South Wales, two out of five workers have been arrested after trying to escape the enforcement team. The manager who employed them has been a British citizen for over 20 years. You got naturalised in the 80s. He decides to help Officer Collins question the remaining workers. You're a boss, you're an employer. Do you have any documents to say that you can work here? Mm, Just I so you can... You haven't got a copy. What's her immigration status? Well, she was an asylum seeker. She's an asylum seeker, so yeah. she's claimed asylum. Yeah. What's the outcome of that uh, asylum she's, claim? Uh, she's allowed to work. Allowed to work. So she's got asylum, has she? She's been granted asylum to refugee status. When was it granted? She was granted in 1996. She made a claim. So she claimed in 1996. But when was it granted? She's waiting for a solicitor. She's waiting for a but she hasn't been granted yet, then, has she? So you told me that she was allowed to work. So you've seen documentation since she hasn't worked, but you can't have. She just said she hasn't been granted. Although she's told her manager she's an asylum seeker, he still believes he's seen paperwork that proves she can work. Some asylum seekers are given permission to work by UK border agency. He'll need to find the documents to prove this or could face a £10,000 fine. Occasionally, very rarely, um, we, we give permission to work. So he's looking for a document to confirm that now. He's the one who's been responsible for hiring right. all three. Have you seen a passport for any of them, Mr Trim, no? Uh, no. no. Well, he's got a fair few documents down there, so with a bit of luck there'll be something in there that uh, will help us. So it's not there? Not there, no. I thought I had it. Okay. Right, it's not there. He can't find the documents he needs. And next door, all that turns up is a driving licence. All right, that's fine. Like you said, we'll take this down and then we'll take just um, confirm your details, OK? Downstairs, Officer Collins checks the woman's details yeah. on the Home Office database. 
Her immigration history is extensive. She's had three applications to stay in Britain since 1996. They've all been refused. She now has a fourth application in the system for her and her child. Until she gets a decision, she's not supposed to work and must report to the local police station every month. No. We, we, we can't find anything to say that she can work. She's got to report, she's got to check in with this immigration and let us know where she is at all times, OK? So what I'm going to do is set her up and report and I'm not going to arrest her, put her in custody, there's a child upstairs and everything else, OK? It's imperative she does that, OK? That way she can start getting some money, because obviously she can't work here again at this point, because obviously 1996, she's been here quite a long time, and we can get this sorted for her better for her, OK? And obviously the child. The manager of the takeaway is fined £20,000 for employing three illegal workers. Uh, it seems that apparently I'm, I'm, what I'm doing is illegal, it's not right, so uh, I have to wait now. The two kitchen workers who tried to escape are taken to a local police station. After further questioning, they were released and asked to report to the police station twice a week. So far, they are complying. Coming up, the plot thickens in the case of stolen identity, and yet another stolen name is found. Mark, who's Indra Mohan? And it's rise and shine in Wales. Hello, mate. Immigration service. Got a warrant to enter the premises. Do you want to get yourself up, please? In South London, the criminal investigations team have arrested a couple from Guyana, South America. For the last 14 years, they've been using stolen identities to live in Britain. They have used an identity that's not theirs to claim benefits, um, and they've received thousands of pounds from the public purse. They've claimed just over £100,000 in benefits as brother and sister. In reality, they're living together as a married couple. Searching through stacks of documents has revealed this woman's real name is Kamini Sukram. Now the team want evidence to prove the identity of her partner. He was living here using a stolen name, Rajendra Naidu, whilst he was registered with the Home Office as Mark Singh. And just now, they found a bank statement with yet another name, Indra Mohan. So who's Indra Kumar Mohan then? Who is he to you then? Because the, the account's in that name and your name, it's a joint account. Indra Kumar Mohan or Kamini Sukram, which is your real name. So who is this guy? He was like a friend. He's a, was he an ex-boyfriend or something or what? Hey? Is he an ex-boyfriend? Yeah. He's an ex-boyfriend. Every day. <laughs> we just found a Guyanese bank statement which had um, her real name on it and the name of somebody else, um, Indra, it was Indra Mohan. I suspected that might have been Mark Singh's other real identity, but uh, she said it was some ex-boyfriend in, uh, in Guyana. Mark, who's Indra Mohan? It's not part of OK. The couple both claim that Indra Mohan is the woman's partner. Officers have found an identity card which could clear up the confusion. Do you know Mr. Mohan? No. You don't know Mo Mr. Mohan? That's strange. That's um, a picture of Mr. Mohan. That was a Guyana identity card in the name of Indra Mohan, which had Mr. Singh's photograph on it. With his true identity revealed, a relieved Indra Mohan now wants to come clean. We were like in prison in here. We cannot go anywhere, I can't go for a holiday, nowhere. I can't see my mom who just have a, who just a heart a bypass in New York. I can't even go to see her. And so I'm happy if I'm going home, I'm happy. I'm just sad enough, I'm fed up. I, I was expecting this to come more, <laughs> far more earlier. <laughs> but at this time... The confessions continue. Now it's the turn of his partner. What started all this was as soon as I landed here, then I got pregnant. I wish you'd seen that happen when you were three, four years old. That's what. So you could have grew up in, in 
where the lie started. <coughs> After 14 years in hiding, this couple has finally been caught up. Sit in the front, I've got to that But it's a familiar story for the investigations team. Identity hijacking is not uncommon. It's rife, really. Particularly for people that are desperate to stay in the UK, they'll, they'll do anything. Identity fraud of one sort or the other costs the taxpayer £1.2 billion every year. While fingerprints and photographs are taken at Croydon Police Station, Officer Leonette has made another discovery about the man's real identity. When we were at the address today, we found an identity in the name of um, Indra Mohan. We made checks with the Home Office, and it appears that this person arrived in the UK in 1990. Um, there's allegations of domestic violence, and he was either deported or removed in 1991. He wouldn't therefore be allowed to come back in that identity. Hence, that's why he's um, acquired another identity of Mark Singh. He left Britain as Indra Mohan and came back illegally as Mark Singh. He then applied to stay in the UK indefinitely using this name. They've lied to everybody, because so they knew this was coming, so they'll just have to take the consequences. The couple from Guyana were remanded in custody. They later pleaded guilty to deception and benefit fraud. They were each sentenced to eight months in prison. Still held at immigration control is the returning student from India. Officer Lee wants to know why his documents show he studies in two places at once. Just follow me, sir. But this student can't even remember the name of the college his certificates are from. Take a seat. You don't know the name of the college where you studied for a whole year? Not a whole year, six months. Six months? You yeah. sure? So how long did you study at the second college, was my question. I think eight months or nine. What subjects did you study? Well, first year. It, for your eight months at the second college, whose name you can't remember, what subjects did you study? Can't remember. You can't tell me where it, what the name of the college was or what you studied while you were there? Oh. You've forgotten. Hmm. All my documents, you can check that. Well, I'm asking you, sir, because the only way I can be sure that you've studied here is if you tell me and you can't tell me anything. Yeah, because I told you my memory is not so sharp. That's not an excuse. Um, I, know, I know why you can't remember the second one, because you never went there. When did you enrol at Churchill College? In October, I think. October what year? 2007. So why then do you have letters from the other college, the second college, saying you were also enrolled at their college at the same time? What time? The same time you say you've been studying at Churchill College? No. Yes, sir. Can I have a look? No, because that will give you the name of the college. One of them's wrong. So I have I a problem with the fact that you've got documentation in your bags which tells me that you were studying in two places at once. You may disagree with me, that's what the documents say. This leads me to believe that you've been less than honest with me so far today. Listen, this is true. Don't tell me to listen. Okay. I've got the documents. You can't remember what's on there because you never went there. That's why you don't know the name of the college. You've got documents by deception. How you got them, I don't know. All right, so stop messing about because this is ridiculous. Saying you can't remember the name of somewhere you claim to have studied at for eight months. It's ludicrous. Ludicrous. I need some time to think. I can sit here and wait, it's fine. Tell me all the lecturers' names. Can't remember. Tell me what exam you sat last. I can't Tell remember. me what That's... the title of the exam was. I told you I can't remember right now. Why not? Because my mind is not steady, I told you. My mind is all messed up. I can't remember, I need some time. Rubbish. It's not rubbish. You've been found out. 
You don't know the answers because you're not studying anything. It's quite frustrating because I know that anyone with any credibility as a student would remember the answers to my questions, you know, where did you study? He can't remember a whole year of his life. It's quite obvious he's got something to hide. Quite clearly he's trying to conceal something about his past here. It may well be that he has been attending college, um, the current college. The problem I have is how can I be sure of that if he's telling me he can't remember his tutor's names, the modules he sat, when he sat an exam, or what exam he sat. It's just nonsense. Officer Lee is convinced he's not been studying, but without hard evidence, there's little to go on. She talks it over with her chief immigration officer. All I have is that he has absolutely no idea. He just can't remember anything about his college. He can remember his journey there. He can remember a bit about what he does at work, but every time you ask him any, anything academic, he's got no idea. College is saying he's attending, but at the moment he, he's not satisfying me that he is. But I don't know what we can do, because clearly we've got, I don't think we have enough at the moment. No, because if it went to appeal, what we would have is the college saying, yes, he's attended, yeah. yes, he's got all these pass marks, we're the educational provider, we're well, the, we know, we know yeah. if someone's a good student or not. Well, we haven't got enough to go on, No. personally. I think we're flogging a dead horse. I know, as frustrating as it is. I shall um, tell him the good news. He'll be thrilled. I'm sure he will be. <laughs> As one of the colleges says he's studying there, there and there is no evidence to say otherwise, Officer Lee has no choice but to allow him into Britain. Right, it's your lucky day. All right? You awake? You understand what I'm saying, yeah? My chief immigration officer and I have spoken about you at length, all right? Mm -hmm. Now, Whilst I'm not satisfied that you're studying here, at the moment I don't have enough to cancel your visa. So you're being allowed to enter today, all right? However, when your visa comes up for renewal in November, you'd better hope that you can remember by then what you've been studying. Otherwise you're going to have a problem, all right? So I think it was a bit stress, but at the end of the day it was quite good to a happy ending. Would you say? I'll try and remember next time. Unless I have an admission from him, or from the college, or from his employer that he has done something in breach of his visa conditions, I have no choice but to grant him entry. No work. Only sleep, eat. <laughs> Maybe some studying? Yeah, of course. All right. Bye. It's 11pm in South Wales and the enforcement team is looking for illegal workers. Specific intelligence was that illegal workers would be there after 10 o'clock, so that's why we're there at this time of night. This team raids 150 takeaways every year in the search for immigration offenders. Tonight they're visiting a kebab shop. Good evening fellas, immigration. We've got a warrant to come in. OK, thank you. Yeah. I say what you're doing. Hello! Officers search the premises for employees, even if it means waking them up. Hello, mate. Immigration service. Got a warrant to enter the premises. Do you want to get yourself up, please? Downstairs, Officer Collins begins to question a man he found in the kitchen. Nationality. Where are you from? I am from Turkey. Turkey. Where are you living? Upstairs. Is he sleeping upstairs? Is he living upstairs in the flat? Are you in a, here on a work permit? Ah, you got in your passport. What have you got? Okay, wait there. Can I take? Yeah, one second. He's got a passport upstairs there as well. Pair. As officers search for the Turkish man's passport, the man who's just woken up faces a grilling from immigration. So you've applied to stay here, have you? Yeah, Albanian? Albanian, yes. Have you claimed asylum? Yes. Right, you've claimed asylum. And this chap? Albanian. Yeah, he's claimed asylum. Yeah. Application outstanding at the moment. Technically, he was out of time. 
but there's a bit of grace period and it's accepted that he was within time even though he was out of time right. final one so technically so we're still waiting for this albanian man came to britain in 2001 aged 15. Right. where's your passport he was given permission to stay until he became an adult he's since applied for asylum and is waiting for a decision Upstairs, officers have found the passport they've been looking for. Uh, basically, he's presented us with a, with a Turkish passport. He's got uh, a visit visa in there. Uh, visit student, but the visa can clearly states uh, no work or we cost of public funds. Uh, second name, Akbas Alpha Kilo Bravo Alpha Sierra. Oh, he's got a student visa here. This man came into the country as a student for a one-month English course. It finished three weeks ago. His visa says he's not allowed to work here because he was studying on a short-term basis. If he has been working, then he'll be deemed to be working in breach of his entry conditions and he may well stand to be arrested. Oh, yeah, he's behind the camera. So this course in St Giles, down in Eastbourne, that you took a month over, that's what you were supposed to come in for, and you were supposed to leave after that. Yeah, yeah. so why didn't you leave after it? So, okay. I think you've been working here. He's trying to improve his English, that's what he's been doing, I know he has. That's what he's been doing. This student won't admit he's been working, but officers spot the kebab shop yeah. has CCTV. Maybe the truth will be on there. That's one, yeah. It was him, yeah. Just, just see this gentleman here um, serving a customer. He's saying he's not working here. Obviously, the evidence there is, is that he is. Red T-shirt. Gentleman working with a T-shirt, that's you, serving, yeah. serving a customer. So, and if we play this tape back over a longer period, it's going to be on there, isn't it, a lot more. So you might as well come to it clean and just tell us, because we're going to play it back. We've got documentary evidence there that he's actually working. So he's working in breach of his conditions of his stay. I am now going to arrest him for working in breach, OK? <laughs> It's, it's a dead giveaway, I mean, it's a double-edged weapon. It protects them, gives them a bit of um, security, but then it works against them and shows them working. Yeah. With the video evidence showing he works there, the student from Turkey is arrested and transferred to an immigration removal centre before being deported. Coming up, the man behind the mask. Try to relax. You're going tense. But will he make it into Britain? <laughs> at Terminal 3, an Australian man has been stopped at passport control. Chief Dyson hands the case over to immigration officer Brendan Bruce. Australian male. Four months holiday. Single ticket, three and a half thousand Australian dollars, which is what, fifteen hundred quid? Fifteen hundred, two thousand. Yeah. Yes. Um, Going to stay with some friends in the UK. He also applied for the Youth Mobility Scheme. He was the working holiday maker, okay. kind of thing, um, and was refused. He's basically been to the consulate, said, "I want to live and work in the UK for at least a limited period." We've said no. Doesn't have a job to go back to. Doesn't have that much money. Has his bags been done? Don't believe they have. OK, I'll start with that. I'll we'll go straight down and do that now. The passenger has been stopped because the immigration team believes he doesn't have enough money for a four-month holiday. That, and just three weeks ago, he was refused a UK work permit. Um, I'm going to take you downstairs now for a baggage inspection. We're going to go straight down. Do you He'll have to convince Officer Bruce that he's not okay, here to work. A bag search may help the officer find any evidence of the man's intentions for his trip to Britain. Did you pack in a hurry? Um, yes, yes. Um. The passenger seems nervous. Try to relax. 
-hmm. Try to relax. You're going tense. Officer Bruce finds a mask, which may or may not be work-related. You're looking nervous. This man is carrying some strange clothes. But are they a concern for immigration? This document might be. I found a letter of sorts, or a contract, it says a contract between master and slave. This contract is between the master and the slave. This contract is made with the full legal consent of both parties. The slave must learn to desire what the master wants. Signed by the passenger as the slave, dated the 5th of June 2008. That is not an employment contract as I would see it. Um, so, it's just, I think, a bit of interesting reading. Officer Bruce is content the passenger's contract is not a sign of employment. But he still has concerns about the passenger's funds. OK, I'm going to go and interview the gentleman now. Mr Goff. The immigration interview gives Officer Bruce a chance to find out about the passenger's trip the the and the items in his bag. OK, the equipment you have in your bag if you're coming here for a short holiday, why do you have all of that with you? Your, uh, your clothing, your fetish clothing. Why? Fetish clothing. I intend to hopefully use it whilst I'm here. Okay, you have a contract with your master. Where is your master currently? I have no idea. Will you receive any form of cash payment for using your equipment? Absolutely. Okay, what do you have to return to in Australia? Okay, I have a couple of pets. Obviously all my friends and family are in Australia. My life is in Australia. I don't believe he can afford to be here. He's got £1,500 to last, including paying for at least partial rent, food, whatever transport he intends to do, whatever things he intends to do while he's here. He just doesn't have the funds. Officer Bruce will now consult his chief immigration officer, Sarah Dyson. Let's think about what he really needs to survive in the UK, in London. You know, even living on beans and jacket potatoes for four months, it doesn't really hang together. And we know that he wanted to work here because we've got the evidence, you know, he applied for that visa and got only refused three weeks ago, didn't he? So I'm recommending refuse leave to enter and return him to his country. I just want to come outside, I just need to explain something to you. Sure. Okay. Um, the situation is this. Due to your current circumstances, I'm not satisfied. You are going to be refused entry to the UK today. So would you prefer to go tonight or take a flight tomorrow? Might as well be tonight. His lack of funds makes the immigration team suspicious he's here to work. He's refused entry and sent back to Australia on the next available flight.